like how stupid could you be to not know this stuff? No one tells you. If you're Uruguayan, you think this is all totally normal and that this is just how the world works, but it's mm. not. I was really trying my best to be super nice and like be polite in the way I was saying things and people still got super offended. So this time around, I would just say we care a lot less about that. Yeah, Everyone like, just called me out on being a foreign white girl complaining about Uruguay. Exactly. It's been two years since my first Everything I Hate About Uruguay video and I thought it was about time we did a little update. I've been living here in Uruguay for over three years and I feel more qualified than ever to talk about some of the things I dislike about the country. In the first video, we just rewatched it, I feel like while I got a lot of hate for the video, I was really trying my best to be super nice and like sugarcoat, well not sugarcoat it, but be polite in the way I was saying things and people still got super offended. So this time around, I would just say we care a lot less about that. I There are so many things I love about this country and I want that to always come across, but the point of this video is not to tell you all the good things, it's to give you an insight into the not so nice things so that for those of you who are not Uruguayans but are considering moving here, whether that's temporarily or permanently, you at least know what you're getting yourself into and can make an informed decision. Yeah. Do you have anything to say about the first video when we rewatched it? Oh, it was funny. <laughs> the editing style it and was the... horrendous. Yeah. We, it was also filmed in our very first apartment, which we affectionately call the, the dungeon. dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> so the lighting situation, not that cute. I look really weird. Um, we didn't have a good light. It was a basement, sort of. Yeah, we were basically living in the basement. It so... was... We were like the floor above the garage, so we were, yeah. Yeah, and you could tell there was still like a Christmas tree set up in the background, so it must have been January of 2021 yeah. when we filmed it, and a lot has changed since then. So I wanted to start this video out by going over some of the things that I did get wrong in that first video, because there were a lot of comments, some of them constructive criticism, and some of them just like outright mean. But there are some things that I did get wrong, so I want to go over those first. Then we're going to talk about the things that we still agree with. And then maybe at the end, add on a few new ones just to spice it up. Mm. How does that sound? Mm. Okay. I like it. Good plan. And before we start, I do just want to say a big thank you to everyone who did watch that first video, especially those of you who watched it the whole way through and understood the intention of the video because that is to this day our most watched video despite the fact that the lighting and the audio are really not that good quality and I know a lot of you really did appreciate I do like the fact that no one called us out on that no like, there was another comment about like ah oh, the edit or like the sound because there's yeah. the, we're re-watching it I, there was like the sound editing was beautiful editing issues that I would just like we repeated ourselves and we I just didn't cut it out because mm. I wasn't paying attention to it. No, and, and everyone like, just called me out on being a foreign white girl complaining about Uruguay. Exactly. Which I totally understand. Like, those are valid, but I think a lot of it got lost in translation. Mm -hmm. Like, if Uruguayans were watching my English video with Spanish subtitles, it oh. maybe sounded way worse than the way I was actually saying it in English. But yeah. Yeah, especially if you like took what you said and then at Google, face value, and then Google translated it. Yeah, like a lot of the words would just be like, "ooh." Yeah, I feel like in English there's like nice ways to say things, whereas in Spanish it just kind of is like, "ooh." It can be very blunt. Yeah. So enough of the intro. Let's get right on into the first few points. All right. So first of all, the things that I got wrong in the first video. <laughs> There, there were a few, and a lot of these we learned from the comments, so thank you to everyone who took the time well, to comment politely. Comments and also just people telling us. Yeah, general. and just like experience, like from being here for longer, mm. obviously we're going to learn more things. So when I was talking about the old school nature of Uruguay, the biggest one that kind of sums up a lot of these other points is that life here is pretty old school. I mentioned that like regarding banking, it was really difficult to set up automatic payments and things if you didn't have a credit card. Now, we're not sure if this is something that has changed or if we mm -hmm. just didn't know about it at mm -hmm. the time, but now a lot of them you can set up 
automatic like payments for your bills and stuff. They it, have apps. So yeah. like a lot of it has, but I don't, we don't know if it happened because of the pandemic, because mm-hmm. like they were forced to do that because people couldn't do their banking without leaving their house. Yeah, they you didn't want to, so many people at the banks. They didn't um, want the lines. The lines were huge, remember? And they we, still are, but yeah. they're way better than they were at the time. Well, because they, you, you you could only let in a, a set amount of people mm-hmm. and, and stuff. And just, you know, It was and, problematic. <laughs> but I, I don't know personally if there was the apps available. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, c- cool if the, the entire pandemic created these apps because like, Uruguay has this issue where it needs to just catch up a, a few things and that'll be so much easier. Mm. But they've got um, automatic payments. That's what we were going to talk about next. And having apps as well, like to check. I mentioned this in the first video that there was a lack of like mobile applications, but we mm-hmm. can check out Antel bills, mm-hmm. our water bills, our electricity. Like what's that? Ute? U-T-E? Yeah. yeah. They... So we've, we've just learned, I think. I yeah. think that was a thing of just like figuring that out. So because no one here will specifically tell you Mm -hmm. And if they do, they'll just give you a little sheet of paper and be like, go to this government website. And sometimes that government website works and sometimes it doesn't. Which is something I touched on in the first video that I absolutely (laughs) still agree with and nothing has changed since then. But we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, So another thing that has changed is like more tap to pay options from the bank didn't have a chip in it. And we just were so used to having a chip that I was kind of like, excuse me. So we couldn't use the card online. We had to go back and specifically request that our bank account was able to be used online and that our, we could get a card with a chip in it. So we could do like tap tap to pay, which tap to pay here really isn't a thing, like um, pay wave kind of thing. You, it's not really common here. That is way more common now. And also things like we were talking about, um, I'm not sure if these specific cards existed previously like a prex card mi dinero um they have mercado pago which is linked to mercado libre which is like their version of amazon that's what that's what everyone says but it's absolutely not the same it's like local stuff it's the same it's half amazon half like ebay you can buy second hand things or you can buy from it's the same you can buy so much from it is it's good amazing mercado it's libre it is good yeah but it's it can be expensive and it doesn't, re- it's, it's not the same. So when people say it's the same thing as Amazon, it's not. I'm from Australia, so I'm not even well, an Amazon the issue user. Is but with Amazon is that there's so much more options. That's mm-hmm. the only thing really is just the ridiculous, like Amazon and eBay are just, you can go there and buy. Endless options. That's it. And like, in Uruguay, the, the options are definitely limited. Mm-hmm. But that's not. Like, but it is improving. Is. Yeah, but that's not their problem. No. That's not their issue. They've got to deal with. Da, da, da. The other one does. Mm-hmm. So yeah, regarding those like cards, I do think that um, Mercado Pago has been here for quite a while. I just couldn't have my own account without having a cedula. So you can't have your own Mercado Libre account without having a cedula, mm-hmm. which is a problem if you're a foreigner because it can take a while to get. So luckily we had Alejandro's number. Yeah, and I'm actually not sure we never checked. We should probably check. Um, we'll put it in the comments uh, and go and check with like Prex and Nidinero. If you're allowed Prex, to you can have with a with your, yeah with a passport number. There's okay. an option to log in with a passport number. But I'm I don't not know sure about me dinero. But are yeah, you, yeah, because then you can just because you could be Argentinian. True. True. Um, and there there is an option. I think I originally signed up with my passport mm-hmm. number, but then I changed it over to my cédula. Mm-hmm. So some things will allow you to do that. Others will not. Mm-hmm. And I do, we don't. Th- oh, and also, so just so people know, so we'll have it up here. So like uh-huh. me dinero is Red Pagos mm-hmm. and Prex is Habitat. Mm-hmm. So like that's the differences. Which are two businesses that would be completely useless in Australia. But... They're they're very useful here because you can do basically everything you want from yeah. either one. But like some of them only have they have competing contracts with different companies. I think blah, essentially blah, 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 blah. the reason they exist is so that older people could go and pay their bills well, anyone in cash. Anyone can go and yeah. pay their bills in cash. Whereas in Australia, no one pays in cash. Yeah, we you, don't you just forget. Wouldn't here, you don't have to prove your income if it's in cash. If it's in cash, so you can just go deposit your cash. If you're a normal worker, that's why the lines are so long of, of trade workers, mm. like tradies in Australia. 
Because mm. it's just all they're doing is they're not taking their checks, they're taking their cash and yeah. they're just depositing it. Mm. And that's how they work. So it's a way to get around the tax, which again, I'm all for. Like, but it just it it the whole system is just very different. Mm-hmm. And it like and you it were takes you a while to learn because no yeah. one's willing to help you at with, all. Yeah, which Alejandro Yeah, Sorry. which Alejandro said earlier. It's really difficult to learn these things. So people who were kind of commenting on the first video, like, how would you not know this? How, well, like, you've been here for 10 months. How, like, how stupid could you be to not know this stuff? No one tells you. If you're Uruguayan, you think this is all totally normal and that this is just how the world works, but it's mm. not. Um, like, <laughs> feriados, which is, like, public holidays. They're yeah. just like, how did you not know it was a long weekend? It's like, because I don't live, I didn't what? grow up here and they're like oh it's the the, the day of independence and i'm like oh that's cool that'd be interesting to learn did you guys go to anything it's like yeah we went to this thing to about the Dia de la independencia and i'm just like mm-hmm. why didn't you invite me along i want to learn about the stupid country if you so, want to learn things you really have to put in the effort yeah. and the information is out there you just have to find the right people who are in the right mood to actually be and helpful. right mindset I yeah mean, so. we've we've had some really really nice people at pretty much every business we've gone to we've had really good like workers and then equally awful workers who are just mm-hmm. so not helpful mm-hmm. it's a big it's like it's human beings you yeah. just get a big variation in the usefulness moving on to the next point it's not really that important but there's a lack of big like department store things they don't really exist here I mentioned that there were a lack of department stores and again in the first well, video that's the thing I wanted to ask mm-hmm. you about was what is your definition of department okay. store Australian department stores I would say Target, Kmart, Myers, David Jones okay so we're gonna have options popping up um so in the US they have obviously like Target, Costco. Walmart, Costco okay okay like, like big big stores that sell a variation of different things okay. I said here the closest you had was the Disco Fresh Market and the Tiene yeah. Ingleses. But actually, we went recently to the Giant. Giant. I'm not saying Giant. Which is like Which a is really big... giant. It's literally just called giant because yeah. it's massive. You think you... Well, I mean, you walk into the front yeah. door. It looks like a mall, but on the inside, there's just like little stores I out the front. I think it used to be a mall. And then there's like... It's kind of like when you walk into an Ikea. Like you walk in and then there's just like... A lot. The end, like the checkout, and once you go through the checkouts, it's just like all open plan. So that I would fully consider it um, a department store. Yeah. And again, like I said in the first video, not having department stores is not a big deal, and it's absolutely not a deal breaker. But it was just like it does make shopping more inconvenient mm-hmm. when I go to or like Spotlight. I would consider in Australia Spotlight to be a department store, and when I go, because I'm a seamstress now. I have a business where I sew things. If I want to buy my fabric, I go to one store. If I want to go buy threads or zips, I have to exit that store, turn the corner, go to another store. If we want to buy wool, we have to go out of that store to another store. If I want to buy little attachments for my sewing machine, that's a different store. If I want to buy the sewing machine itself, a different store. Maybe we should we should actually ask the women at the, the cloth store why they do that. Like why each one, like is it... It's more expensive to just buy all of them and import them in. I think people they, just like having. Do you have a license for it? Specialties and the the stores themselves are small, and otherwise you'd have to like demolish well, the stores, expand them. It or people like specialty. Yeah. It, it's a, it's the definition of like in the old days in Australia and in everywhere they would have the butcher, the baker, that there'd be the fruit, like the fruit and veg guy. Mm-hmm. But then that kind of all went out the window the when... The barbershop, the all the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah I but get now it. there's supermarkets. Mm-hmm. Whereas here, you kind of have both still. They have supermarkets. Even where we live in Ciudad de la Costa, there'll be the supermarket. And then outside there's... Even though in the supermarket, there's a butcher and a baker. Outside, like literally right next door, is a fruit and veg guy. And mm-hmm. then next to them is a baker. Mm-hmm. And you have that in like every neighborhood. It's mm-hmm. very common here. Mm-hmm. And they've been there for years. Yeah. Like generational. Some of them are generational. Or mm-hmm. it's just someone new that starts And I off. love the small business aspect of it. Mm-hmm. It just, you you can't say it's more convenient. Well, they, it's. <sighs> it's nice. The ones are very independent. Yeah. They like their independence and they like the fact that they can say, well, I, I, we have these stores. So like mm-hmm. if the big stores are not open, but usually the big stores are open and the small stores aren't open. Yeah. Like today is the, well, 
Today is the Dia day de los tra trabajadores. Mm -hmm. Dia de los trabajadores. There. Well, yeah, she said it good too. But <laughs> it's just so the local store was open, but a lot of the, the supermarket, the supermarket was, open. was open. But the bakery was not. And neither was the the, the, the station. I think we're getting sidetracked. Yeah. yeah. But um, okay, the next thing was something that yeah, Maddie's got a lot of issues with because what? the internet speed. Oh yeah. Okay, moving on. Internet speeds. Ours is honestly fairly slow. So I mentioned in the first video about the internet speed that we were paying X amount of dollars for a speed that we just weren't getting. Mm. In the comments of the video, we actually learned something really helpful. So there was a solution to the problem, but I don't think there should have been. Anyway, to solve what the problem, the solution? we needed to buy a secondary, is it called a router? Yeah. So we needed a second router from like, not connected to Antel. Antel is the company we bought, we pay for our internet through. So the the router we purchased was separate. Mm -hmm. Now we have two. Mm -hmm. The internet does work better, but why do we need the second one if we're mm -hmm. already paying for the first, like. But that was, that was the old routers. Now they work better because <sighs> they gave out new ones. So now I, the internet's good. I feel like this is a really good example of Uruguay. There are solutions to problems, but instead of fixing the problem, they've just like made this really weird little like, oh, well, I know that this is weird, but instead of changing that, we're just going to like add this extra little rule that kind of cancels it out. But it works. It's like, when it's, your math, it's, like, it's like when your math teacher sits there and they say, well, show me the working. And it's like, well, do you show them the working? And they're like, well, that's wrong. And it's mm. like, how is that wrong? And you got and to the same conclusion, I got to the same, and but then you did like, it wrong. Well, it won't if you use it for this. And I'm like, well, I'm not using it for this. I'm using it for this situation. Okay. This is the Uruguayan in me that's coming out. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is the last part from this section because I was trying to make this video quicker, but we tend to ramble. So I mentioned offhandedly when talking about buying clothes for Alejandro that the average height here is five foot five. Mm -hmm. I didn't research that. That was just a number that I came out. Like it, it was not that deep and people got so mad at me in the comments. Like your Uruguayans on short. No, exactly. Yes, like there's, there are. There's some, there are some behemoths of men that I have seen. There like, are some, we've seen some people who are almost as tall as Alejandro. Yeah, like. And he's what, over, you said two meters 10? But that, well, that's, that's what we calculated but we're not really in sure because it's doesn't about six it. foot nine yeah. um in australia we work with centimeters just the same as here so i'm 168 centimeters i'm taller than most women here i'm not like oh my god she's so tall but i am taller than the average and i am taller than a lot of men here i'm sorry but that is a fact mm -hmm. especially if you like i just got the dutch jeans yeah, and people, I think, when they heard me say five foot five, they were thinking about people in their twenties, which is incorrect. But you have to remember that your abuela and your abu like your abuelas, they count in the average, and yeah. they're like little tiny little. Yeah, the older generations are. E -de 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 -de. And they still count towards the average. Because so they're I'm... in the population, yeah. Well, and also, yeah. being shorter is not a bad thing. Like, it's not. It wasn't meant to be an insult. It was the point of the statement was that buying big and tall clothing here is I mean, difficult, and that stands. As an example, we bought a shirt from a dude at the Fedia, the mm -hmm. local Fedia, who saw me and it was like, "I have a shirt for you." Well, at first he had pants, but I was like, "Well, I have someone who made me pants." Yeah, I don't need someone. You know, I got pants. The shirt didn't fit because mm -hmm. he saw me as being huge and was like, Pfft. I have this huge shirt. I have It'll this fit. huge shirt. It'll fit. Was it a 3X or a 2? A 3? But it, like, it fit, but it wasn't comfy. Fit. And it's not a good fit. No. And that was like the biggest you could possibly get Like, here. that was huge to him. Yeah. That was like, <laughs> and like when we walked out of the store today and these kids were like, enorme. Yeah. So. Yeah, and again, obviously, when she's talking about me, I, I'm I'm not, I'm not the average. No, but so. even someone who I would say is six foot three, six foot four, would really struggle to find pants uh. or long sleeve shirts, clothes, that, shirts. It's the shoes, length that's socks, the problem. Yeah, like shoes, shoes. especially shoes. Is People laugh difficult. at him when he asks for his shoe size because it's just ridiculous. And I mean, again, that wouldn't yeah. be such a problem if. 
you didn't have to pay so much money to import things. Yeah. I did make a few errors in talking about the import as well. I think I said that you, like, for your free import, you, you still had to pay the... And you also said that you only have three, you have four. Per I'm year. pretty sure it was three. Oh, well, Maybe now it's four. Maybe they've added an extra yeah, one. Yeah, now it's four. Anyway, now that I have a cedula, I... Uh, so technically we have... Six or eight. eight. So I now oh, actually qualify... <laughs> I qualify now to actually obtain these like free imports and you don't have to pay the 60% tax. $200. Yeah. Each purchase has to be under $200. With delivery and everything. I no, think. the delivery can be in addition. Oh, okay. Great. I um, so you still have to pay the processing fee, I believe, but you don't have to pay the 60% tax. But after your fourth one, you do have to pay the 60%. Yeah. And also you have to... It's you have to inform them. if you want your package to arrive at your house, mm -hmm. you have to inform them beforehand. So like you're going to make the purchase, then you send a mail to the other one, which mm -hmm. is the import people. Mm -hmm. They then receive that information, go cool on this date. This person is going to it's either before or just after. Yeah. I can't remember. It's it's like within a few days. But you have to tell them, look, this is my purchase is coming through you guys. Mm -hmm. Can you please just send it through? Yeah. I have all the information and all the delivery. Which is why there's a whole business that exists here of people who go and do all that for you. Yeah. Because the process is... Because some people are it's working. It's tedious. It's annoying. It's Well, no, they because the, the office closes. It's all the way at the airport. Everybody lives in Montevideo. The airport is all the way... Like, it's a 40-minute drive. Mm -hmm. If you're working, the... Stop and then you have to wait in hours. the at the at Luana's place for like an hour sometimes in lines going from building to building. It's just Cute annoying. Yeah. It's yeah. again, it's not a deal breaker, but it's frustrating. But yeah. So we pretty much haven't bought anything online in two years because it just wasn't worth the hassle. Yeah, well we didn't have a car and it was just it was just, we also lived really far away. Uh -huh. So it would have been in like such a long time. It would have been at least two hours on a bus. And waiting, so that's your entire day lost. Mm -hmm. And we just didn't have the time. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So moving on to the things that I still agree with, just speaking back to that old school nature and the stubbornness or unwillingness to change things. I feel like in that, I also want to add that people are really defensive here, and you can tell that by reading the comments of the original video. And I get it. Like, no one wants to hear a foreigner come in and, like, say negative things about their country. But I think people were missing the point and were picking apart the slight little things that I maybe said that I were incorrect. Was, or a misunderstanding. Yeah. More of, it, of just, like, misunderstanding. But the fact that they own. were misunderstanding me and then calling me, like, names and saying that I could not possibly be intelligent because look how stupid she is saying all this crap that's like not true, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And completely ignoring the fact that most of the points I said were true. Like about the litter, about the pavers, about the fact that people are oh, stubborn. You're talking in Australian again about the, the sidewalk and the gar well, the litter's litter. But Rubbish. Um, like pavers is the, the sidewalk where it's all cracks and mm -hmm. here it like it, you, it should be accessible for everyone but then a lot exactly. of the places that don't have the money um there's again, huge for, holes for and me and yeah. you it's maybe we'll fall over and graze our knee mm -hmm. for a little old lady she could fall over and break a hip someone in for a some, wheelchair yeah someone or people walking thing. around with crutches like it's it's not just that it's ugly or inconvenient it's downright dangerous mm -hmm. same with the roads the amount of potholes on the roads now that we do have a car you have to dangerously swerve the car if you want to avoid the potholes, but if you don't avoid the potholes, you're going to damage the under, like the underneath of your car. Or motorbikes. And I get it. The country doesn't have tons of money to put into fixing every little thing. But, but they, buy, they buy planes. <laughs> but just don't tell me that the problem doesn't exist because that's a lie. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Other point. Government websites. <laughs> they're, they're still pretty 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 bad mm -hmm. but they're getting better and they Which there's not so many better? there's not so many of them like the ones from Canelones where they have their own control over it if you go to their websites okay. if okay. you go to the general but how long websites, how long have we been trying to get a recycling bin oh oh yeah uh, like a two month? months two months 
Comment. We've been calling people. We've had the WhatsApp number. We've messaged the WhatsApp number. We've gone to the office, the council building. So you go to the council building. Then you get a piece of paper. Because the mm-hmm. dude's like, we don't do that anymore. But it's the office of the place. Not everyone even gets recycling bins. So when no, no, our neighbor... by zones. But we were one mm-hmm. of the first zones. So then it was a secret. So we got really excited so when our neighbors suddenly had a recycling bin. And we we were, were like, finally. Because to put my recyclables in the bin... Gives me physical pain. And it's nice to see like <laughs> like little notes that the recycling bin people will now put on it and just be like, look, the stuff that is in your bin right now, we've it's taken we've taken the stuff that's is recyclable, mm-hmm. but this stuff that you have here You did it wrong. <laughs> Chuck it in a different direction. Which direct. isn't people's fault. They need to have more education on how to recycle. Yeah. yeah. But you can't but But back to the point. <laughs> what we've was that? been no. You're good. <coughs> Don't die. I'm choking on some mate. Uh, I'm choking on some mate. <coughs> I guess on the yerba better. On the on the yerba. 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 Uh, but we've been trying to get a simple thing of to receive a bin for our recycling. It just recyclables. it just seems like everything is just like excessive. Just yeah. like, I wish it was... It should have been a one-day solution. Give me a location. I'll go to that place. We could drive there and pick up the bin ourselves. Chuck our bin, which has got... There's a bin over there. Just chuck it out the back door. Grab the other bins. Chuck them in the car. Go home. Be like, this is my over there. This is my location. Check it off your list. Find your place. Find your place. Check it off your list. And I'm like, but no, yeah. so I have to call someone, message someone, then take that number, take that number again, then message it again, because the wrong number was actually pressed, the first number, and then the extension doesn't work, and then you find it, and then the extension, because the first extension was the wrong extension, and then when you get an extension, then like, actually it's extension, and then I really hope you speed this up when you're editing. Ooh. That little voice goes, ooh. Oh. So, long story short. It's shit. <laughs> So I think when Everything you were saying that shit. the websites are improved, you were forgetting they, what they, you're talking they, about. They, they. They're not. You were wrong. Yeah. There's the problem is, is that there's so many laws here and there's so much information that they have to put on one page. It gets frustrating. Uh-huh. So there's a lot of bureaucratical mm-hmm, bullshit. Bullshit that <laughs> is like what say, they what they like mean. legally meant to put in. So mm-hmm. and that stuff. Ooh, smoke in front of the camera. Um, that stuff. ADHD. Sorry. <laughs> um, that is the stuff that really just clogs it full of shit because they're like if you if you don't have this then you have to have this 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 mm-hmm. this 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 and yeah. this this and, and yet like, this what? is coming from two people who work from home and we do have the time to call these people and do this but if you had a nine to five job where you worked in an office in the city and then you had to the office in the city is like the government buildings close at yeah. four and you've got or three sometimes yeah because they're just like They'll open like 10 till 3. But if you work 9 till 5. How, how are you going to do it? How? I'm bad at, I'm bad at, I'm bad at math. And I know that that does. It mm. just doesn't add up. And to get half a day off just to go there and then sit there. And then they, no, you pe- might not they, get in. You no. have to book appointments. Yeah. You might be late. They give you like five minutes. Hmm. So I feel like the other things I mentioned in the video were, again, the, the litter. So the rubbish around the garbage. place. No, no, just, not litter. It's, it's yeah. In some places, it's just full of Some of it garbage. does come down the river, and that is not Uruguayans' fault. But the we've heard this from locals as well. The amount of Uruguayans who just don't care. Again, they have other priorities, and I fully get that. But at the same time, it's a, uh, if we don't mm. look after our Earth now, like on Earth Day, I was walking back well, we were walking together back from the supermarket and someone had thrown their cigarette packet on the floor at the bus stop. There was a bin a meter away. Oh, and there were bus tickets on the half. floor. How dare you. So the point is, a lot of people here just don't care about the rubbish. And this is a this is everyone's problem. It's not just, oh, it looks ugly. Like, this is killing the environment. It's killing the fish. It's like... Like, we've seen... Remember when we lived in Positos and someone threw out a, um, what was it called? A mattress and it blocked the drains and then it like flooded everything. (laughs) Remember that? When there was a storm. So people just like, they don't think. It's like, what is the easiest solution to my problem? Just throw it out the window. Do I care about the consequences? No. That would be impressive. Not throwing the mattress out the window? Yeah. Imagine how many people you could take out. So thank you for watching the video. That's about all we have time for today. I did plan on adding some extra points in at the end, but we ran out of time. And 
And also off the top of our heads, we can't really think of anything else. We got a little carried away talking about the original video. Oh my God, I need a bit aggressive. Aggressive? I also do want to, again, thank everyone who watched that whole video all the way through and to the Uruguayans or foreigners who commented that they agreed with pretty much all of the points. So just a little bit of validation to know that we're not crazy. And I really don't think... Also, also the, the, the fights that mm-hmm. would happen in, in the, the comments, comments of like <laughs> other Uruguayans just being like, shut the, shut the fuck up. And then mm-hmm. just being like, no, that is right. No, that's wrong. What are you talking yeah. about? Where do you live? And then just being like, well, I'll... I mean, I'm just like, okay. Yeah, it was a... Honestly... It was a good video. Go watch the... Don't go watch the video. It's horribly edited. Re- go look at the video and then read the comments. Because the video itself is kind of embarrassing. Maybe just go look at the comments. Because yeah. the video is really bad. So watch this video instead. But comment down below if you have any further questions or anything you want to add. We are planning on making a video after this one about the language about uruguayan spanish that was going to come before this video but someone got a little nervous to film it because it's a little bit more serious and this video was supposed to be a little bit more light-hearted yeah fuck that you're good yeah it was just tr- mid yawn just mid yawn mm-hmm. so the uruguayan spanish video will be coming soon as well as we've been planning a video about safety in the country and Everyone keeps Why? asking so about, <laughs> and everyone's been asking us about the healthcare system, and I would love to make a video on that, but I don't want to rush it because I don't want to say something that's wrong. So maybe if we can ask some of your friends who work in healthcare for oh, the like, doctors, or yeah, the doctors the, that I have as friends. You do have a surprising amount of doctor friends. Yeah. Or physiotherapist friends. Yeah. So maybe one of them and could I'm come creative. and. So if one of them could come and help us out in the video, that would make me feel a little bit more confident in talking about it. But I did just make a live video yesterday where I touched on it a little bit. So go watch that if you want more of like a candid response. But comments down below on videos you want us to talk about in the future or if you have questions about anything we said today, please comment below. There will be more videos coming soon, hopefully with the both of us now that I've convinced Alejandro to come back and film. Um, Anything you want to say? Don't be a dickhead in, like, general. In the comments and in life, just Mm -hmm. don't be a dickhead. Or if if you're going to comment something rude, just know that every comment actually just helps the video reach more people, so. Yeah, that was fun. Thank you to all the haters who got our channel more views. Go fuck yourself. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Sunday mornings hiding under covers I don't mind staying in with you play your favorite movie